Hi guys, welcome back to the session. Today we will learn Excel automation in UiPath. So let's get started with a demo project where we are going to read data from Excel and then we are going to write that extracted data in another Excel. So this is the Excel file of employee details which we are going to read using UiPath and later on we are going to write that data in another Excel sheet. So let's quickly move to UiPath and let's create a new project. So for that let's click on process and let's give the name as Excel automation and my project will be stored in this location and let's give the description as this is a demo project okay so let's click on create and now we are in the UiPath design page let's move to prop project and let's double click on main and now we are good to drop activities over here so let's click on activities and we know that the first and foremost activity which we need to add is a workflow type and we are going to use the workflow type as sequence so let's drag and drop this sequence over here and now we are good to add excel activities over here so first of all let's search for this excel so this excel is present under app integration and we have multiple activities present under the excel so we are going to look into all these activities one by one. So first of all, let's start with this Excel application scope, which is used to open an Excel file. So let's drag and drop this Excel application scope over here. And let's change the name of this Excel application scope as Excel application scope one. Here we need to provide the workbook path on which we wish to work. And we wish to work on this employee details. So let's provide the path over here. So let's click on browse for file and we wish to work on employee details. So let's select this one and click on open. So we have provided the path over here. So what this Excel application scope do? So the Excel application scope opens an Excel file and all Excel activities related to a particular Excel must go inside it. So what does it mean? Let me show you. Since we wish to work on this employee details file, so all the activities related to this employee details must go under Excel application scope one. Now let's say that we have another Excel as well on which we wish to work. So in that case, we need to add another Excel application scope activity, which we will see later on. So first of all, let's focus on this Excel application scope one. And here we have provided employee details path which is going to open employee details file. Now we wish to read data from this file. Let's say that first of all, I want to read only a single cell. Let's say that I want to read this John. So how to do that? So for that, we need the cell name and the cell name is B2. You can see over here, this is the column B and the row is two. So the column name is B2. So we want to read this B2 cell. So how to do that? So for that, we need to add an activity over here and the activity is set to be read cell. It is going to read a cell value. So let's drag and drop this over here. And in the read cell, we need to provide the sheet name. It is sheet one, that's okay. And we want to read the cell B2. So I'm going to give over here B2. Now the John which get read from here, it needs to be stored inside a variable and that variable is a string variable. So we need to quickly create a variable. So let's move to variable and let's click on create variable. Let's give the name of the variable as cell value and the variable type will be string and the scope. Let's change the scope to sequence. So we have created a variable and in the read cell properties, this is the properties of this read cell in the output, the result we need to assign as the variable value. So the variable which we have created is cell value. So let's provide it over here. So what this read cell is going to do, it's going to read the value of cell B2 and then it's going to assign that value inside the variable and the variable is cell value. So now we want to display this cell value inside a message box. So let's search for the message box activity from here. 
so let's search from the message box let's drag and drop this message box over here and I want to display a message as cell value is and then there will be a variable that's why a plus sign and the variable I'm going to use as cell value so we have provided the message box value so let's quickly run this project and let's see how it works let's save this one let's click on run so it says cell value is John because in B2 in B2 cell the value is John that's why it displayed cell value as John so let's press OK so as of now we have read only a single cell value now let's say that we wish to read these two rows so how to do that so for that we need to add another activity in UI path because this read cell activity reads only a single cell but we need to read a portion of data so for that we need to add another activity and that is set to be read range activity and we need to take this read range activity from the excel package there is another read range activity under workbook which we will see later on so as of now let's select this read range activity from excel and let's drag and drop it over here and this read range activity under this read range activity we need to provide the sheet name so that's okay we have provided sheet one and here we need to provide the range parameter so what we need to do here so let me show you since we, we want to read these two rows so it starts from a2 and it ends at d3 so I'm going to write over here under double quotes I'm going to write a2 colon d2 so we have provided sheet name and the range parameter over here now this read range activity stores the output in a data table unlike this read cell activity here we had seen that the output of the cell value is stored in a string variable but in this read range activity the output is stored in a data table so let me show you so this read range activity reads a portion of excel and it stores the result in data table now what is this data table so data table is a variable type and it acts as a simple spreadsheet with rows and columns so what does it mean now since we wish to read these data which is nothing but the combination of rows and columns so the output of read range is stored in a data table so let's create a data table variable over here so let's click on create and let's give the variable name as excel data and the variable type is going to be system.data.data table now if you are looking for this data table for the very first time you won't get this data table variable in this list so what you will do you will click on browse for types and here you will search for system.data.data table okay so here it is system.data.data table which is present over here so let's click on ok so we have selected the variable type as system.data.data table and let's give the scope as sequence over here as well so we'll move to the read range properties and in the output the data table name i'm going to give as excel data which we have just created so we have provided all the values in the read range it will read the data and then it will store the data in the data table that is excel data now we wish to display the result of read range so for that we will use message box which we have used earlier over here so let's search for this message box activity so let's add a message box activity let's drag and drop it over here and we have learnt in the very beginning of the UI path sessions that message box can store only the string values it cannot store other variable types and this Excel data this Excel data is a data table variable so we need to convert this Excel data into string value so how to do that so for that we need to add another activity and the activity name is output data table so this is the output data table under the data table so let's drag and drop it over here 
So what it is going to do, it will simply take input as data table and it will give the output as a string value. So let's move to the properties of output data table. Let's expand this one a bit. So here you can see that in the input it is asking for a data table. So we'll give the Excel data which we have created and in the output it says output of the data table as string. So we need to create another variable now. So let's create another variable. Let's give the name as Excel data as string. Okay, and the variable type will be string and let's give the scope as sequence. So what it will do now here in the output data table, in the output section, we need to provide the string variable Excel data as string. So this output data table in input, it will take data table as Excel data and it will convert this data table into the string that is Excel data as string. Now, since this is a string value, we are good to display it under a message box. So in the message box, I'm going to give Excel data as string. So what we did, we read a portion of data from the Excel sheet, assigned the output to a data table that is Excel data. Then we added output data table which will convert the data table into string value and then we are good to display the string value inside a message box. So let's quickly run this project to see how it works. So for that, I'm going to save this project and let's quickly run this one. So first of all, it displayed the cell value using the read cell activity. That is cell value is John. Let's press OK. And then it used the read range activity to read the entire row number 2. But we wished to read the row number 2 and row number 3 as well. So let's press OK and let's look into the UI path. So here we need to give the value as A2 to D3 to read these two rows. We need to give the value as A2 to D3. Here we have provided A2 to D2. That's why it read only a single row. Let's provide the value as D3. Let's save this one and let's quickly run this again. So it read the cell value as John. That's OK. Let's press this one. And now it read both the rows as expected. So let's press OK. Now let's look into the another scenario to read data from the Excel sheet. So let's say that I want to read this entire Excel sheet. So how to do that? So for that only a slight modification is required. So in the read range, we are providing the range parameters. Let's say that if I delete the parameters, there is nothing in the double quotes. So in this case, it's going to read the entire Excel sheet. So let me show you. Let's quickly save the project and let's run it now. So the cell value displayed, let's press OK. And here you can see UI path has read the entire Excel sheet using the read range activity. Now I wish to write this entire data in another Excel sheet. So let's see how we can do that. So let's press OK. And since we wish to write the data in another Excel sheet, so we need to add another Excel application scope. So let's search for the Excel application scope from here. So this is the Excel application scope. Let's drag and drop it over here. So we have provided the Excel application scope. So let's add a workbook path over here. Let's give the name as result.xlsx. Now if this file is not present, UiPath is going to create a new file. And if this file is present, then UiPath is going to write on that already existing file. Now we want to write the data. So for that, I'm going to add a write range activity. So let's drag and drop this write range activity over here. And again, all the activities related to this result file will go under this Excel application scope. So let's change the name of this Excel application scope to and all the activities related to this result file will go under this Excel application scope to activity. So we have added a write range activity over here. 
the name of the sheet will be sheet 1 and this is the cell name so it specifies that from this cell the value will be written so that's okay I want to write the value starting from cell A1 and it takes data table as input so the data table which was the output of this read range activity that is excel data I'm going to give this excel data as a input to the write range activity so let's move over here and in the right range I'm going to give the data table as excel data so we have provided all the values under the right range and at the end we can display a message as let's add a message box again and at the end let's display the message as data written successfully okay so our project is complete first of all it's going to read a single cell then it's going to read the entire excel sheet storing the result in the data table and then it's going to write that extracted data into the another excel sheet using the write range activity so let's quickly save our project and let's run this one so first message box got displayed as cell value is john using the read cell activity let's press ok and then uipath read entire data from excel sheet using read range activity let's press ok and it says data written successfully let's press ok again and let's quickly move to the result file to see the result so let's move over here and here you can see the result file got created let's open this one so this is the result file which got created which is similar to the employee details file now you can see over here a difference this is the headers in the employee details which is not present in the result file and if you wish to add all the headers from the employee details excel sheet that is employee id first name last name and salary how to do that let me show you we'll move to ui path first of all let's move to this read range activity and in the properties you can see under options there is an option of add headers make sure that this one is checked so this one is checked that's okay so what this add headers do this add header signifies that the first row of the excel sheet is a header that means that in the employee details excel sheet it signifies that the first row is a header which is true now we'll move to the right range activity this is the right range activity so in the properties of the right range there is an option of add headers so as of now since this add headers option is unchecked that's why we didn't get any headers in the result file but if you wish to add headers over here what we need to do we need to check this box so all done we will run the project again to see whether headers are added or not and one more thing to notice over here is that since result is an already existing file now uipath is not going to create any another result file it's going to override this result file and let's save the task and let and let's save the project and let's quickly run so first of all we got the value of single cell john using the read cell activity let's press ok and then ui path read the entire excel sheet using the read range activity let's press ok and it says data written successfully so let's press ok and we'll quickly move to the result file again so this is the result file let's open this one and you can see we have headers now in the result file as well so in this way we read the data from one excel sheet and write those extracted data in another excel sheet but as of now we have not added any condition in our project let's say that i want to read only those employee details whose salary is greater than 10000 so in that case what needs to be read in that case the row number three and row number four need to be read so how to do that so for that we need to add loop activity and we need to add if activity as well which we are going to see in the next session 
and that's all for this session guys hope you enjoyed this video and if you did give it a like and share with your friends and hit the bell button to get the updates on the latest videos and i will see you soon in the next one bye bye